So hello again and welcome back to my second part of tips and tricks in Video Studio X7. So hopefully you enjoyed the first part and this of course is the second one following on from that and I'm going to be following up all of your comments which you posted in the first part. So the, there are a few things to clear up um, and a few things to add to from the previous part and one of those is uploading manageable HD files. Now I did touch on this but only briefly and it may have caused a bit of confusion so I apologize for that if it has but basically when you go to share and you want to export an HD video for upload to YouTube or maybe another video hosting site you want to get the right file type for your video and also the right size for your internet upload speed. Now if you've got unlimited broadband then this probably will not be an issue to you um, or fiber optic for that matter but if you've got slow internet like I have then you're going to want to get the right one for your videos. So yes the right file size is essential if you've got slow internet like this video I'm recording now will probably take me about five hours to upload in 720 so you've got to be careful when rendering your video so in this drop down menu here you'll see a load of different file types and file sizes now I've chosen MPEG4 I've always found this to be the best file type to upload to YouTube or other video hosting sites the reason for this is it keeps the quality up there but it keeps the file size relatively small so this one here is obviously 480 you then got your normal 720 and 1080 which is HD and then you've got the ones beyond that. Now when you are doing HD videos like I said in the previous video if you've got slow internet but it is an HD video I'd recommend 720. If it's not an HD video just do it in standard there's no point rendering it in HD. If you've got fast internet you can do it in 1080 you can upload in bigger files than that I believe to YouTube now however there isn't a great deal of point because you're going to have to have a camera which can record in that really HD quality now there are some GoPro Black Edition I believe does more than 1080 nowadays um, so if you have filmed in more than that then you can go and upload it in a higher definition than 1080 but yes that is what I do when I'm uploading to YouTube. I always do it in MPEG4 and I tend to do 720 because of my internet speed. So hopefully that has cleared a few things up and that file type to me is the best size for the quality you get. Right, the next thing, moving back over here into the edit section, you'll see there is the thumbnails. I've only got one thumbnail in here at the moment and that's me swimming in the sea. Probably not the best photo but yes that is me. And the confusion that this has caused is the file location and the thumbnails. Now someone on the comments actually told me that they had already done this problem and they found out too late but yes this thumbnail is not the video. If you delete the thumbnail the video in its file location will not delete. However if you import this thumbnail here and then delete the video in the file location on your computer you've lost it. This thumbnail is not a copy of the video. This is just here for ease of use when video editing. So you've got to be really wary of this. Importing video into here does not save the video. You have to make sure that you keep the original file location video where it is. Deleting this is no problem it will not remove the file from your computer. So that is just one thing um, which someone said it's a good thing to pass on to other people um, because it can be incredibly annoying if you go and delete the file off your computer somewhere thinking that it will still be saved on Video Studio when it's not. Now moving on and expanding from this topic you can do something else. When you go to file you'll see there is something called a smart package. Now this smart package will allow you to save all of your videos, audio and photos with the original project file all in one folder 
and this will mean that you can then delete your other files off your computer to maybe free up space and then you do not have to worry about deleting a file out of your project everything will be there together and everything will be saved together so that is definitely something you should look at I have actually done another video on that if you want to go and see that just type it in on my channel and you should come up with a smart package video so that's something you really do want to be looking at if you are planning on fetching video and other files from all over your computer rather from one place okay the next comment was about replacing multiple transitions now from this I'm assuming that you've already got all of your transitions in and you wanted to replace a few of them out of all the ones you've got now the only way I know of changing those is actually by physically going to them and changing each one individually um, but you can change them all to a random one if you wanted to but you'd have to do this before you import your first transition so it's a bit complicated it's not too easy to change them as such um, in a batch if you like you've got to go to settings and then to preferences and then when you go to edit you'll see at the bottom here it says transition effect now if you've not put any transitions in then it's fine because then when you put your video files in it will automatically add a transition so when you tick automatically add a transition effect you can choose what transitions will be put in now at the moment it's set to have these ones it will choose from any of these and randomly put them in between your photos or your videos whatever you're importing if you have all of these ticked obviously it will be completely random every time if you've only got one ticked you'll always get the same transition so it's up to you which ones you choose and also if you have got this setting switched on then you'll always get a variation in transitions so that is my only answer to that question I'm afraid I, as far as I'm aware there is not another way to do it except for going to them individually and changing them to what you want so that's as far as I can help you with that one um, so if you've got any more questions do come back to me and I'll try and help but moving on again we've got a backing for text now this I'm assuming is the border um, for your sort of subtitle kind of things when you import your title I just import this here under the C you would then want a border behind that now when you click on here you'll see it says object there's also a frame you can add frames behind your titles so I'm going to pick one here and drag it into the overlay track and you can see that I have now got a border slash frame behind my title at the beginning of the video so you can then obviously move around your text where you want it to suit on your video and that is basically just a backing to your title so some people may use this some people may not it's just one way of adding um, a bit more color if you like and more professionalism to your videos so that is something you can do you can add a frame behind your titles it doesn't have to be behind the title necessarily you can just add a frame around your video there are quite a few frames to choose from and like I say they are located just here in Video Studio so it's all these that you can pick from okay so now on to motion tracking which was requested in the previous video and if you've never used it before it can be quite complicated however once you get the hang of it it's actually pretty easy and it's a good function in the software to allow things like text and objects to follow other things inside your video so it can be very useful and I'm going to start off with just a 12 second clip and I've chosen some fish in the sea now we need to go on to motion tracking so first of all select the video you want to add it to and then click on this these three circles which is the track motion button now when this first loads up you'll see there is a tracker here it probably defaults tracker 1 um, and then it will say add matched object now I'm going to remove that for a start because I'm going to add the object afterwards 
And now what we want to do is add the tracker onto something in the video. So this red circle is what will be tracking something in your video. Now I'm going to go for this fish and its eye is something which stands out on the fish. So I'm going to try and get that as central as I can onto its eye and then we can start recording its track. So again this red button with the three circles is to start recording the track and of course that is also to stop as well. So I'm going to start and you should see that it follows that fish's eye. And now it's actually gone out of view so I'm going to stop. You can now see this line and this is what has been drawn from when it's followed the fish across the screen. And then this bit at the end was where it lost it a bit so I should have stopped recording earlier. Right so I'm happy with that now so I'm going to click OK and if I zoom in on the timeline you'll see just here where this blue line is that is where I have tracked the motion in the video so that is now the place where I can add something to that video to be following it inside the video so I'm just going to add a piece of text but you can also add objects so like you always would just add a piece of text it's just going to say fish just to keep it simple and you can change the size of that to whatever you want and then right click on that this same thing applies to an object exactly the same just apply it into your overlay track and you do exactly the same thing as what I'm going to do now match motion is what you need to click and this will bring up this window again and it will allow you to position it where you want on the screen now remember it's going to follow that fish so if I put it here it's going to still follow it across the screen just slightly below the fish so I'm going to put it about there there are other things you can do, you can rotate it if you want and you can change the angle with it using the green squares but for now I'm just going to keep it as it was right so just to show you how it works I'm going to press play and you can see that it's following that fish now there was a bit of perspective there and when it went away the text grew in size it got bigger now that's because of two keyframes we've got the keyframe at the beginning which I've just set that's when I resize the text and we've got the keyframe at the end which is bigger so if you want it to grow or get smaller for that matter just change the keyframe at the end accordingly I'm going to make it smaller just so it doesn't grow as it goes across the screen so now when I go back to the beginning you'll see it will go along with it and it says fish so that is the basics of adding something to another object in your video so that is the same like I say the same thing applies for if you're adding an object into your video now there are a few things here this is the size of what you've got so obviously if we increase the size of this it increases the size of the text and you've got the transparency there rotation some shadows angles um, more transparency moving it about um, borders edges soft edges and all that kind of thing if you play around with this then it's really self-explanatory however if you do want me to go through it in another video then I will but to be honest if you just have a play around with it it is pretty simple to work out so yes that is motion tracking in Video Studio X7 and now we've got that out of that window I'll show you it again just without all that annoying text around it and you can see that the writing fish is following that fish in the sea so that is it for this part two of the tips and tricks video if you want another one then of course leave some comments below and some suggestions of what you want in the next video so for now thanks for watching and as usual please comment rate and subscribe